For quite some time scientists have been talking about carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere, greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane, greenhouse effect, global warming, accumulation of carbon dioxide, burning fossil fuels, renewable sources of energy, carbon sources and carbon sinks, carbon emissions, carbon sources we all have heard these terms, some of us, for decades, for our entire lives. We saw the graph below, or versions of the graph below were on the news, on science textbooks, were on advertisements, were on banners and t-shirts. In 2023, a team at NASA made animations that helps understanding of the process of carbon accumulation on Earth's atmosphere. Using data previously published, the global flow of carbon dioxide during 2021 is depicted. During the winter in the Northern Hemisphere, it is summer in the Southern Hemisphere. When the summer starts in the North, the winter starts in the South. You will notice that in the beginning of the year, more carbon dioxide is produced from fossil fuels on the north of the Earth while land and ocean absorb some of it in the South. During winter, the days are shorter so, the amount of photosynthesis is reduced. This is important because photosynthesis is the main process removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Photosynthesis is an ancient process performed by plants and other microorganisms in which carbon dioxide is converted to glucose. It converts the gas carbon dioxide into the sugar glucose. This process requires energy, the sun's light. The energy from the sunlight is used to link the carbons from carbon dioxide together to form glucose. As you can see, the total amount of carbon dioxide released by burned biomass and used fossil fuels is larger than removed by plants and microorganisms performing photosynthesis on land and ocean. If we look one more time at the flow of carbon dioxide during 2021, we will notice that the removal of carbon dioxide by land and ocean are intermittent. The land and ocean are blinking because they only remove carbon dioxide when light is present allowing photosynthesis to take place in other words during the day. Another important aspect is the fact that there is more land in the northern hemisphere than in the south. Further, 90% of the human population lives in the Northern Hemisphere. Therefore, during the winter in the Northern Hemisphere, more people use fossil fuels to keep warm while the land plants perform less photosynthesis because of the shorter days. We can see that during the summer on the Northern Hemisphere, the amount of carbon dioxide that accumulates ceases to increase reflecting the growth of land biomass and the reduced amount of fossil fuels being used. Once the summer in the north ends, the increase of carbon dioxide accumulation restarts. There are other factors contributing to the overall increase in carbon dioxide levels. For instance, we see that biomass burning happens at some points contributing significantly. Nevertheless, the atmospheric carbon dioxide continues to accumulate and gets distributed throughout the globe. The easiest way to see how all these processes contribute to the changes on carbon dioxide levels is to use a waterfall graph. Here, the individual contributions can be clearly observed on the different times of the year.
notice that if we reduce the amount of fossil fuels we could have a negative balance of carbon dioxide produced over the year meaning if we act plants and microorganisms that perform photosynthesis would help us to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It depends on us.